Hello grandchildren, it is currently Saturday and today I wanted to show you guys how to bleach shirts. Bleaching shirts is one of the coolest and most affordable hobbies, aside from playing with your belly button. But that's a little bit too competitive for me, so I stick with this. Getting into shirt bleaching allows you to turn a regular shirt like this into an awesome shirt like this. So this is a shirt that I made right after I learned about what shirt bleaching was. I can't find the actual shirt, but I think this picture will probably do just fine. It's really cool. It's kind of like mixing uh, tie-dyeing with drawing or painting or something like that. You get to make your own shirts, but you also get to kind of make art, and then you get to wear that art later, which is why it's so awesome. So the way that shirt bleaching works is that you use bleach, which bleaches things. Uh, it takes the color out of mat different materials. So let's just get started into making something, and this is the first time that I've tried to make this, so it could turn out a disaster, but we're gonna do it. So let's just jump in and bleach some shirts. And this is the first time that I've done this design and I have no idea how it's gonna work out. I'm gonna be figuring this out on camera. So uh, we'll see how it works. So let's go over supplies really quick. And the best thing about shirt bleaching is that it's so freaking cheap. You, I mean, photography equipment can cost thousands of dollars. I mean, just painting, you need easels and paper and different pencils and stuff. This, it's, I mean, you could probably get all the stuff you need for under 20 bucks. First things first, you need bleach and this whole thing was was about two or three bucks and this is gonna last pretty much forever in shirt bleaching. I'm not gonna need to buy another one of these for years. Next you're gonna need freezer paper which you can get at uh, most stores. It's important that you get freezer paper instead of just like some other kind of paper because it, one side of it is shiny and it has some sort of like wax coating on it which is really important. It's called freezer paper, looks like this. Next, an X-Acto knife which I found in the garage. I probably shouldn't be flipping it around like that because it does have razors in it and those are bad. Next you're gonna need an empty spray bottle. Uh, I got this at the store for about a dollar. So really no money there and this is gonna be used pretty much forever. You're also gonna need one pen which is probably the most difficult item for me to find out of all of these things. You're gonna need an iron, which I just found in our laundry room, so yeah, cost pretty much no money. You're also gonna need an ironing board, uh, one of these, which I put a cloth over, but uh, yeah, that was also just in our laundry room. So, free. And finally, you're gonna need an American flag. And now this doesn't have any direct use during your shirt bleaching process, but it will provide you with emotional support. So just hang this into the corner of the room and you're good to go. Uh, this cost about $10, which is the most expensive item on the list that I purchased today, but there's no price on freedom, so. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull up my picture on the computer. Uh, now you could totally draw this on paper if you'd like to, if you're better at that. I am not as good uh, on drawing with paper as I am at drawing on the computer, so I did that already. Uh, now I am going to be creating a multi-layered stencil, which is a little bit more complicated, but honestly just keep watching and it'll make sense as I do it. Uh, it's probably easier to start out with one layer. That's what I started out with initially. That's really easy, just cutting and spray once and then wash it and you're good. So this is my little astronaut guy that I drew up about half an hour ago uh, for putting onto the shirt. And uh, the thing to keep in mind with uh, multi-layered stenciling is that the color is going to be inverted. Bleaching takes the color out of the shirt. So you're gonna be wanting to cover the things that you want darker and the things that you want lighter are going to have more passes over with the bleach and that'll make a little bit more sense when I actually do it. I'm going to cut around the body of the astronaut on the freezer paper and I'm gonna take that out. Removing the, rast uh, the astronaut's silhouette from the freezer paper and then I'm going to spray where the paper was in the shape of the astronaut's body. And that'll make a little bit more sense again when I actually do it. And I'm not that great at drawing. If you're better at drawing, it's actually perfect if you just draw directly onto the freezer paper. But again, because I'm not that good at drawing, I drew it on the computer, I'm gonna trace it onto the freezer paper. So now we have to begin the process of cutting out the stencils that we made from the freezer paper, which takes a little bit of time and that's usually the most boring part, so I'm just gonna speed through that.
I have this box that I was using to cut on. Also, it's the perfect size to put this shirt around. Uh, find some kind of cardboard. It doesn't have to be an entire box, just a sheet of cardboard works, but put your shirt around that cardboard because what happens is when we're gonna spraying bleach on this, if you don't have something separating uh, the front of the shirt with the back of the shirt, the bleach is gonna leak through to the other side and then you're gonna have a bunch of weird stains on, the, on your back that uh, don't look that great. Now we have our shirt all nice and tight around the box and we're ready to start applying the stencils. Now this is where the freezer paper comes important because we're gonna actually iron on the freezer paper to the shirt because there's that waxy part on the back of the freezer paper. It's go when, you, uh, when you put the iron over it, it's actually gonna melt that wax a little bit and help stick it to the shirt because if you, if you don't have that like adhesive uh, strength to the shirt, the, the bleach might leak through the shirt. Also having it stick to the shirt helps so things aren't sliding around constantly while you're working. Uh, it's way better when you have the wax sticking the paper to the shirt before you start bleaching. So yeah, wax side down. Put that right here on the shirt. So I positioned the, uh, the outline and what you'll notice is this is the outline of everything that isn't black. So uh, I have all that black space around there. I literally just cut along the black border of my drawing uh, because I'm hiding everything. I don't want bleach to hit it all. Everything else in the picture, uh, aside from, there's also the face helmet, little creases, I'll do those in a second. But this is the major outline of everything that will be lighter than black. And you need to have that as your first layer. So take the iron, it's hot, so be careful. And I'm just gonna slide it around. Be really gentle, especially if you have like kind of sharp, pointy edges on your paper where you are cutting. Like right now, uh, the little line that goes up to his crotch is a little bit pointy, so I wanna be careful and probably slide in the direction of that point just so I don't bend it. And it might take a, a little bit of pressing to actually melt that wax and make it stick. So now we have the first layer down, and uh, now what you're gonna wanna do is if you have any extra scraps around, and just grab those and you just want to like cover the sides of the shirt because when you're going to be spraying the bleach you don't want to accidentally get a little bit of spray on these uncovered parts. So my little face mask is stuck on there. And keep in mind if you're doing a single layer stencil this is probably all you need and this actually would probably look pretty decent the way it is because just the part that's visible right now will get lightened. So if you're doing something easy like a logo uh, you just cut out something like once like this, like what I just did right here, and then skip to the part where I'm actually spraying the bleach. That's all you gotta do. Uh, for, for the multi-layered stencil though, because I wanted to have a little bit more shading to mine, a little bit more like dimension, uh, you realize that I'm right now I'm covering up all of the parts that I want to be completely black again. So if you look at my original image, uh, all of the space around the little astronaut dude is black. Uh, his little face mask is completely black, just like in my image. And the only part that's left that's completely black are the little wrinkles, which, uh, my mistake, they're really, really tiny, so I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but now I'm gonna try to put down all the little wrinkles in the suit. Now it looks like the next level up is the, uh, the backpack and then some of the chest mounted stuff. So let's stick the backpack on first. This actually looks like our final level is the backpack and some of the stuff on the chest mounted. Everything else is going to be white, so that means it's going to be exposed a few times. This last couple stuff, especially because it's going to be overlapping some of the stuff that's already on, like you can see this part of the helmet is covering those two uh, those two cylinders on either side of his head. So it's covering it. We don't want to stick it on too tight, especially on those spots, because then when we peel this off, they might come up as well, and we don't want that. So we're just gonna, we're gonna kinda stick it in place. But just very lightly. So we finished with actually ironing the stencil on and now the next part is doing the bleaching which is pretty fun. So I've mixed together about half bleach, half water as my mixture. I feel like that usually works pretty well for me. Got my towel right here. You want it right next to it because we're going to be using this towel a lot. 
So here we go. Uh, and again, make sure, test out your spray bottle. Just make sure it's flowing right, coming out in a nice mist. And don't spray it towards anything you don't want permanently bleached. Let's just go for it, I guess. So I sprayed it and dab immediately. Stop it from soaking in. There might be a couple like big droplets in like some places. Uh, once again, just do one more hit with it and dab right after. It's, it, this is gonna be the same thing over and over again. You're gonna spray and then dab. And then that was the first layer right there. So now we wanna target the next level of brightness, which looks like this little square on his chest plate there and the backpack. Now you can already see that the, you know, the body part of him is starting to turn a little bit more orangey, purplish right there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna uh, spray a little bit of bleach onto the shirt and then remove a layer all the way until we get to the bottom. Spray a little bit and dab. Pretty much done. I'm gonna set my towel back here and now, now we can start peeling off some of the layers that we just did. There's one last thing that I want to do with this, and that is I saved this guy from earlier. I just want to cover most of him, and this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna put that on top. It's just you just want to get a really rough outline on top. And this is again, this is a bonus thing. Uh, this isn't something you do on every single shirt. Intentionally trying to make a bad spray from the spray bottle. I want it to be really droplety. I'm just gonna kinda, yeah, I'm just gonna kinda spray across the shirt, mostly targeting the middle. I'm not gonna dab, really. Once you get a, a decent look on it, I'm just gonna do one final dab with the entire towel, and now, the next part is putting into the bathtub. We want to fill the bathtub up with just cold water. That apparently deactivates the bleach a little bit and stops it from uh, getting more intense on the shirt. Take our design off. Now let's take this baby to the bath. So after dipping my shirt in the cold bath water, I threw it into the washing machine and then to the dryer. And now I have this. It's not perfect and it's not exactly how I wanted it to turn out, but I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, it lost some of the details that I was, was hoping that there would be, but I think that was my issue with having the really, really tiny, thin lines. The bleach is going to bleed very slightly when you're working on your shirt. So, uh, I mean, having those really tiny pieces of paper for the small details, uh, they're going to get kind of lost once the bleach hits the material, just because the material is going to kind of soak it through. They're still there very subtly, so I feel like it, it worked out pretty well. It's just up close where it doesn't look too great. I apologize if this was a little bit rough. I haven't done it in like a year or so, uh, and I just kind of, I started filming and did this for the first time in a very long time, so I hope it turned out pretty good. Anyway, that's how I do it. I really like bleaching shirts because it's so cheap and it's uh, it's kind of cool, especially because now I get to wear this shirt. It might take a little bit of time, but as long as you're patient and you're willing to draw things and cut them out and all that stuff, then it's a lot of fun. Anyway, grandchildren, I'm super tired and it's now Sunday, so I should probably get to sleep. I'll talk to you guys next week. Uh, if you see me anytime in the near future, we should do this. We should bleed shirts together or something. That'd be fun. See you guys next week.